At the commencement of the film, eight contenders prepare for a competitive selection process for a lucrative corporate position. Some candidates boost their morale with positive affirmations, while others make minor adjustments to their appearance before entering the examination hall. The room is dimly lit, with desks ranged uniformly for each candidate and surveillance cameras monitor their every move. Once the candidates are seated, a guard armed with a gun enters, creating visible tension. Following him is an individual who remains nameless, introducing himself simply as the invigilator. He expresses apologies for the challenges faced by the candidates, disclosing that they have successfully navigated previous hiring stages and are now finalists. Success in this final test will secure their dream jobs. The invigilator declares a unique set of rules for the test, asserting that no federal laws apply within the examination hall, and candidates must adhere solely to the rules of the exam. Communication with the guard or the invigilator is prohibited. Deliberate or accidental damage to the paper, as well as leaving the room for any reason, will result in disqualification. The candidates have 80 minutes to complete a single question on the blank paper before them. After leaving the candidates with the blank papers, the invigilator wishes them luck, starts the timer, and exits. The candidates, perplexed, turn their papers around to find them completely empty. As tension mounts, candidate number two, in an attempt to fill the void, writes why she believes she is qualified for the job. However, her actions led to disqualification. Reinforcing the seriousness of the test, candidate number five discerns the loophole that allows them to communicate with each other, sparking a realization that collaboration is key. They grapple with various strategies to unveil the elusive question. Amidst the confusion, candidate number one remains silent, prompting the group to assign nicknames based on characteristics including Deaf for his lack of speech. The group explores unconventional tactics, with White suggesting they test the limits by standing up, discovering to their relief that the guard doesn't object. Dark speculates about invisible ink or watermarks on the paper, prompting a futile attempt to decipher hidden messages using the room's lights. Despite numerous attempts, they find no visible clues. Black proposes exploring of rays or X-rays, leading the group to search for a switchboard to access alternative lighting. When they cannot find one, they start searching for the origin of such light themselves. Deaf remains unhelpful, nervously staying in his seat. Blonde discovers segments of emergency lights in the room. However, lacking switches, the group must shatter all other light bulbs to generate an emergency and activate the lights. Brown objects stating they cannot take such a risk. So, a vote is cast, and they ultimately decide to proceed with the plan. After breaking all the light bulbs in the room, it unexpectedly emits a blue glow due to the emergency black light. Everyone begins searching for the question in the paper, except for Deaf. Unfortunately, they are disappointed once more as they cannot see the question. Brunette suggests removing the first layer of the strip light since they aren't lit. This might produce a rays to aid them. They use the woman as heels to break the strips and reveal another form of light. However, they are once again met with disappointment as these lights do not work either. Now, the group only has 60 minutes left. Frustrated, White urges everyone to brainstorm alternatives. As they generate ideas, White realizes they can do anything to number to S paper since she is already disqualified. So, they gather around her desk and attempt to trace the document with a pencil. Still, no question arises. White then divides her paper into sections for experimenting with various methods. Next, he pours water on one of the sections to check if it is liquid activated. However, that proves unsuccessful. Black and White engage in a heated argument while discussing their next steps, but halt upon. Hearing Deaf cry, he silently sobs in his seat while the others watch in amusement. Following that, the man starts speaking in French, asking if they can perceive something in the paper and claiming it reflects their image. 
They don't pay much attention to his words and resume discussing ideas. The room falls into dead silence when Brown speaks. He puts forth his theory, asserting that they are not in an exam, but rather part of a betting show. The company's board members have placed bets on who will crack under pressure, and their presence is solely for entertainment. Tark doubts the board members would invest their time in such a manner. But according to Brown, money is the least of their concerns. With the wealth they possess, the board members likely live for the risks. Now, everyone presents their own ideas. Some assert that the supervisor might be behind this, while others suggest it could be the CFO. Tensions rise, and they start trading insults. Brunette confidently asserts that there's no surveillance because the CEO is hands-on in the company, holding all its rights and power. It becomes evident she knows more about the company than anyone else. Brown questions how she has such insight into the CEO, revealing that Brunette works in HR but has never seen the CEO. She applied for a higher position and got it. White discloses being head-hunted for the job, but others claim they applied. Despite differences, they share ignorance about the company, as they were instructed not to ask questions. Brunette clarifies they are applying to Biro G, a renowned multi-million pharmaceutical company. A few years ago, during a global crisis, when a widespread ailment affected young individuals worldwide, they were the first ones to discover the remedy. Presently, their annual revenue stands at $20 billion all credited to their CEO. Out of the blue, Black proposes that the company may have uncovered a solution to the latest lethal disease, plaguing millions. Dark becomes intrigued and probes Black for more details. White, however, grows suspicious and questions Dark about potential infection. Dark denies it, brushing off the concern. To divert attention, she discreetly retrieves a lighter from the guard's pocket without engaging him in conversation. Subsequently, she eyes the fire alarm. The group devises a plan to use the lighter to activate the sprinkler, believing water might reveal hidden writings on paper. Standing on a chair, Dark falls short of reaching the fire alarm. White assists by passing a rolled piece of paper, which she ignites to trigger the alarm. Soon, water cascades, but the papers remain unchanged. In a sudden twist, the guard approaches the group. Right then, Dark reveals the paper in her hand, exposing it as her own. White had betrayed her to undermine the competition. The guard escorts Dark away as she calls White a betrayer. Following that, an angered Black declares he will knock White. White out. This action causes the light to dim and the group speculates that they are voice activated. They caution each other to be mindful of what they say when Def starts to cry again. White cunningly positions himself in front of Def and coerces him into tearing his own paper and consuming it. The guard approaches Def and dismisses him as well. Now only five of the candidates remain. Black mocks White for being an unpleasant person, but White insists they should thank him for eliminating their competitors. He also asserts that he knows what the question is but refuses to disclose it to the others. In a burst of anger, Black knocks him out with a single punch. The group then secures him to a seat and gags him with a tie. Some time later, White gains consciousness. Brunette removes his gag and he requests his medication explaining that he is also infected with the virus and needs to take medicine every hour to survive. Back searches for pills in his pocket, but doesn't find any. This makes the group skeptical, thinking White is just making excuses for them to free him. However, White claims that one of them has taken the pill and promises to reveal the answer if they return it. Shortly after, he loses consciousness again and starts trembling. Some believe he is faking, but Black insists that he is having a seizure due to the virus. They search for the missing pill in the room, but with only 15 minutes left on the timer, they decide to check each other. Brown is suspected of taking the pill, 
and brunette is proven right when she finds it stuck to a chewing gum under his table. She attempts to feed it to white, but brown throws it into a vent. As the others try to retrieve it, a stressed brunette goes in front of the camera and pleads with the invigilator to save white. However, since she communicated with the invigilator, she is immediately disqualified. After her departure, Blonde uses a bobby pin to retrieve the pill and saves White's life. She also unties him in the process. After he recovers, everyone asks him for the answer he promised. White reveals that the answers are the candidates themselves. They have been searching for a question all this time, but White thinks that there is no question and the one who is left at the end is the answer. The rest of them believe him, but before they can act, White runs to get the gun from the guard. Black pushes him aside and acquires the gun himself. He points it at White, who confidently claims that he won't shoot anyone. Simultaneously, he attacks Black and gets the gun. However, when he is about to use it, he realizes the gun has fingerprint recognition. So, White uses the guard and points the gun at the others. He threatens everyone to get out of the room on their own so he can win the position. Brown doesn't retaliate with the fear of being shot and deliberately walks out. A scared blonde slowly walks outside but yells lights out at the end. The room goes pitch dark, making white shoot in random directions. When the lights come back, black falls limp on the floor with a bullet hole on his chest. White looks around and sees blonde still has a foot inside the room. He is about to shoot her as well, but notices that the timer has stopped. Now, White walks to the camera and tells the invigilator that he is the winner of the competition. The guard approaches him and shows him the time. White is in shock to see they still have 20 seconds left, meaning that he is disqualified for talking to the invigilator. It is then revealed that Def S had changed the time when they were busy discussing other things. At last, the only one left is blonde. She walks into the room and picks up Def's glasses that had fallen while he was being taken out. Using those, she looks at the paper and sees question one written on it. To her eternal surprise, Def enters the room revealing that he is the CEO of the company and was in the test to keep an eye on everyone. Blonde walks up to him and says no. The CEO and the invigilator smile. Seeing that she has figured out the question and passed the test, it turns out when the invigilator asked them if they had any questions at the beginning of the test, it was the only question they had to answer. The whole exam was set to test the candidate's intelligence and attentiveness. They hire Blonde as the CEO's secretary, but she doesn't accept the job because she doesn't want to work with an organization that kills people. The invigilator reveals that Black isn't really dead and that the bullet he got hit with is a capsule that heals the wound after penetrating the body. It is actually the magical medicine they have recently manufactured, which can cure any disease in the world. At last, Blonde accepts the job, and the movie ends as she shakes hands with the CEO. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on the notification and leave a like to help the channel out. Thanks for watching.